Our next questions relate to FA2 syllabus area F. Here, this question gives us some information that we have to use in order to answer which of the above errors would be detected by extracting a trial balance. Roof started a sole trader business during the year and operates basic computerized accounting software. The software automatically creates a suspense account when a manual journal entry is imbalanced and each type of expense has its own general ledger account. They've found some following errors which have been identified by Ruth and then we need to work through these and work out which of these would be detected by extracting a trial balance. Looking at the first one, Roof posted a manual journal entry for insurance expense against an incorrect expense account. Here we've got an expense which would be on the debit side, but it's just been sent to the wrong expense account, which would also be on the debit side. And so therefore that wouldn't be detected just by looking at a trial balance. It wouldn't show an imbalance and we wouldn't necessarily see because it's an expense that there is a missing transaction going on there. Looking at the second one, Additional cash invested by Roof at the year end was coded to sales instead of capital in the general ledger. Once again, cash being invested, so there would have been a debit to the bank account and then there would have been a credit, but this credit has just been posted elsewhere. And once again, because the debits and the credits are equal, we would not necessarily see from extracting a trial balance that this has been posted to the wrong account. Looking at the third one, it tells us that Ruth processed a manual journal entry with a debit of 650 to prepayments, but then only credited expenses with 560. So our debit is 650, our credit is 560, and so therefore we have now got a difference on our ledger of 90 between our debits and our credits. Based on the way that Ruth has her system set up, this would automatically open up a suspense account and that difference would sit there until the transaction can be corrected. So point three, this particular transaction would definitely be detected by extracting a trial balance. Finally, looking at the other option, point four, it tells us that Ruth has not processed the manual journal entry for the year's depreciation. So this means that there'll be no depreciation charge included in the current year's transactions, which would be a glaring error. So if you were to pull out a trial balance and extract and look at the balances, you would see that that would be a missing balance. So here, yes, that would be detected by extracting a trial balance. So looking at the options available to answer this question, we're happy that point three and point four would be detected by extracting a trial balance, which means option three is the correct answer. Our next question wants us to choose which of the following would explain the difference that's been given to us in the above information. It tells us that Maria uses a basic computerized accounting package. Sales and purchases systems are integrated. However, an imbalanced manual journal entry will be automatically balanced by posting to a suspense account. So if there's a difference between the debits and credits, a suspense account will open. And in this case, we have got a $4,000 credit suspense account that's been reported on the trial balance. So what we have to do is decide out of these four choices, which one will clear that suspense account and therefore debit suspense and credit elsewhere to correct that entry. First choice tells us that depreciation charges of $4,000 were incorrectly coded to the taxation expense in the general ledger. This is just going from one expense to another. So there was a debit that should have happened in the depreciation charge account, but instead it has debited the tax expense. There's not an imbalance between our debits and credits, and so therefore this one will not correct the suspense account. The second option, tells us that a $4,000 accrual for rental charges was omitted from the general ledger. So that means it was just missed out completely, which means that there was no debit or credit. Therefore, that doesn't create an imbalance and it doesn't contribute to the fact that we've got a $4,000 suspense account. So once again, that can't be an option. 
Our next one tells us that the manual journal entry for interest received of $2,000 was debited to bank and credited to other income in the general ledger. Once again, it's just been posted to the wrong account. If we've got interest received, then the debit to the bank account was correct, but the credit to other income was incorrect. It should have gone to interest received. But we don't have an imbalance between our debit and our credit side. And so therefore, once again, that cannot possibly affect our suspense account. Which leaves us hopefully with the last option. It tells us that a manual journal entry for $8,000 cash receipt from a credit customer was debited correctly to bank, but credited to trade receivables with only $4,000 in the general ledger. So we've got a debit to bank of $8,000 and we've got a credit to trade receivables of $4,000. So our debit side is bigger than our credit side, which makes sense because we have got a credit balance of 4,000 sitting on suspense, which is the other 4,000 that should have been posted. And so therefore, that will be the correct answer. So we would be able to remove that suspense account by debiting the suspense and crediting trade receivables with the other 4,000, which would then correct that entry. So this option, choice four, definitely explain the difference of the $4,000 that's now sitting in the suspense account. Our last question in relation to syllabus area F wants us to decide whether the following statements are true or false. It tells us in preparing the financial statements, it was discovered that an asset purchased for $25,000 in the last month of the accounting period had been debited to repairs, but in error. Depreciation is charged at 20% per annum on a monthly pro rata basis. So we have an asset that's been recorded as an expense, which means that we've got an imbalance between what should be an asset and what should be an expense in our accounts. But in addition to that, we've also got depreciation that should have been included as a result of that transaction. What we've got to decide is whether the statements are correct, true or false. So the correction will increase the profit for the year or the error would not need to be corrected before the financial statements were finalised. The second choice, we can answer without looking at any calculations whatsoever. If we've got a transaction that's recorded as an expense when it should be recorded as an asset, we have an error which needs to be recorded and adjusted. And so therefore, this is false. The error would actually need to be corrected before the financial statements were finalised. We can't leave an error like that. For the first choice, though, we need to put a bit more fault in. So the correction will increase the profit for the year. How can we work this out? Let's think about how this adjustment is going to affect our profit. If we've got a debit to repairs sitting in the profit and loss, which shouldn't be, in order to adjust for it, we're going to need to debit our asset account with the 25000 and then we're going to need to credit repairs. So we are going to need to reduce the expense with $25,000. That reduction in an expense means that it's going to increase our profit because expenses reduce profit. Therefore, if we're now reversing that out, our profit will get bigger. The only extra thing to be careful of is this depreciation. If we've got depreciation being charged at 20% per annum, that will go in as an expense. So we will have an additional expense, which is our depreciation charge, which will be the 25,000 at 20%. So this would equal 5,000, but it does tell us that this was transaction in the last month of the accounting period, and we are charging depreciation monthly on a pro rata basis. So we're not even going to need to adjust for the 5,000. We're going to take one month's worth of that 5,000, which comes to 417. That will be an additional expense. So that will come off of our profit. So that will reduce our profit. But we can see that the overall adjustment is going to increase the profit figure. And so from that working, we can see that the first statement that the correction will increase the profit for the year is true. And so we have statement one as true and statement two as false.